Chris Randy. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Uh, anybody see anything they want to move from the consent agenda to the regular agenda? I think, uh, what do we got? We got RCMP stats, uh, Chamber of Commerce minutes, Ask Watershed minutes and a newsletter, EK, regular monthly, Crisis Center management, thank you, MP. Jeremy Patzer, uh, thanking us for that gun control legislation. I don't think there's anything there that we need to go any further on. Uh, agenda item 2.2, that the Council of Comic Inners resolves to adopt the agenda for the September 28, 2020 regular meeting of Council as presented, and that a copy of this agenda be attached to and form part of the minutes of this meeting. Moved by Randy, second release. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, anyone see anything they wish to declare a conflict of interest on? I think Monica and I arrived at the conclusion there wasn't anything. Seeing none, I will ask that the Council of the Town of Kindersley resolves, whereas the time being 5.02 p.m., that the regular meeting of Council be adjourned to a confidential in cabinet meeting. Again, mover and seconder. Rob, Gary. In favor? Agenda item 6.1, that the Council of Town of Kindersley resolves to approve as presented the minutes from the September 14, 2020 regular meeting of Council and that these minutes be attached to and form part of the minutes of this meeting. I need a mover on this second. Randy, Rob, all in favor? Carry. I don't know whether you want to speak on this one, Randy, or not. Uh, 7.1 is the 2020 Smile Cookie Campaign. Uh, certainly, I, on behalf of Council, I'd like to thank uh, the owner, Mohammed Wazim, and the manager, Shane Verdi, for really making us feel welcome. And we even put Mohammed to work for a while. <laughs> He's, he, he had it figured out. Um, to Anna for all her patience and organizing and finding people <coughs> and cracking the whip <laughs> on us too. So it, it was a great project. Uh, I think it was 4713, memory serves me correct. The only thing that really bothers me is I hear Rose Tom was yeah. three <laughs> times or five times that high, but uh, maybe next year we'll get a little more organized. Uh, and the money, uh, I believe, goes to some upgrades to the tennis court and yep. basketball court that we have. So, again, much appreciated to Tim Hortons for sponsors supporting this, and thank you to the community who bought the cookies. Rosetown kind of has a real personal deal with the funds they get because of that family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a, definitely a different situation there, yeah. for sure. Otherwise, we can't get me to say anything. This is like it. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> agenda item 7.2, that the Council of Town of Kinders are resolved to authorize administration to make application to the Saskatchewan Municipal Board Local Government Committee for permission to borrow a sum not to exceed one million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
for the purpose of constructing lagoon, lagoon expansion and wastewater upgrades and that the amount of aforementioned debt shall be payable upon receipt of revenue derived from utilities. I would ask that CAO Audrey, could you speak on that please? Sure, so uh, this is the, the lagoon expansion and wastewater upgrade project that we've been doing. Um, this is the project that we did get government funding from um, for a certain amount. We had thought we could probably try to do this project without borrowing um, based on our budget for 2020, but there was um, <clears throat> a couple things in our budget that came to our attention after the fact. Um, one of them being that the grant that we had put in the budget that we were going to receive was overestimated by $500,000. And another one is that the commercial water from what we budgeted is down $900,000 and that's just due to the economy um, with the oil industry and stuff. So what we thought we were going to collect in water sales commercially is not going to pan out. So that just made our total revenue go down that much. And then, you know, with the project itself, it you know, came in a bit more. Um, we had put the grant in for $5 million. By the time we were able, or we got notification that we got the grant, of course, and then tendered the project and, and so forth, it, it all came in more. And we had to pay PST on the project as well, which wasn't, at the time we made application, that wasn't a uh, PST applicable um, project. So all in all, we, we are covering most of it. It was just a shortage of about 1.25 and that is just to keep um, some money into our reserve for just our regular water main maintenance and breaks and stuff that might come up throughout the years. Any questions, Audrey, on that, Council? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I would like to give a mover and seconder for the motion to approve the borrowing. Ms. Deering, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay, 7.3, uh, that the Council of Town of Kinders resolves to direct the Mayor and CAO to enter into a CanNet base station host agreement with Cancel Survey Equipment Inc. Uh, Kim, could you perhaps speak on that? Sure, so this is uh, the agreement that we have with our surveying equipment for the engineering department. Um, so we do have the host station that is located here at the office up on our roof. Uh, so this is the hosting agreement with Cancel and it's, um, we have this with them all the time. So this is just basically a renewal and uh, we're just seeking to get a resolution to enter into the agreement. Any questions on that? Not can I get a mover and a seconder then at least uh, all in favor? Carry. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item seven point four that the Council of Town of Gindersley resolves to recommend as representatives Curtis Sackville, Rod Perkins, Dean Galbraith, and Kim Vogel for the Western Regional Landfill Executive Board pursuant to the duly approved Worley per capita allocation of four available positions to be filled by the town of Kindersley, and that the recommended representatives may be formally adopted to the executive board of the 2020 Worley AGM, which is coming up here shortly. Kim, can you speak on that again? Sure, uh, so the uh, Western Regional Landfill AGM meeting is in October, and the town of Kindersley has um, the executive board is made up of um, so many seats and due to Kindersley's population we have four seats and we can, uh, council gets to decide who we put forward for those four seats. So the individuals that uh, I have set forth in this resolution are the current representatives that are currently sitting on the Worley board so um, I believe all of them are fine with their name standing going forward. So uh, if council passes this recommendation, then this is given to Worley and it's proposed at the AGM. And then at that time, they're officially voted in um, for Worley, basically. So 
Council has any questions with that or wants to put forward any other names? It's kind of a, not a handy one for everybody because they meet in the afternoon, so <laughs> one thirty or something. Yeah, <laughs> the board meets um, monthly, usually monthly. the fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, usually during the day and then sometimes there's site visits and, and whatnot on top of it. Uh, we are moving towards construction of cell 1B and that's actually uh, was beginning, is beginning this week. So um, the board gets a little bit more heavily involved when things like construction and whatnot are happening, but it's been going well. Uh, I need a mover and a seconder for this then, Randy. Chris, do you have your hand up? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, okay. Agenda item 7.5 that the Council of Town of Kindersley resolves to approve that the Worley, that Worley utilize the Town of Kindersley portion of the duly established contingency fund for future capital expenditures, including but not limited to the construction of cell 1B. Kim, you can just explain that. Sure. Um, so at the last council meeting, there was a letter that was, um, I believe it was in correspondence, um, but it was just an update letter from uh, the Worley Executive Board that um, just talked about, you know, uh, where they were to date and that kind of thing. And we had uh, almost, well, we have finished the construction of cell 1A, although there is some components that aren't completely finalized. They're still doing some more work to the approach coming in, changing the gate. Um, purchasing some uh, litter fence screens, things like that. There's some more work that needs to be done to the uh, grid road coming from Highway uh, 7 to the site. So there still is some cost associated uh, with the construction of cell 1A, but we did have a contingency fund in the overall budget. And so there's, so in the letter, it just talked about the contingency fund and if the municipalities, the 19 municipalities that had contributed to the budget, if they would like to see the funds returned back um, as per capita to each municipality, or if those funds would be retained within Worley to be used for other capital projects, such as the construction of cell 1B. Um, the revenues from the landfill currently they do have, um, they have been basically making money each month and putting that money away in a reserve for the construction of the next cells. That's basically how the business plan is set up. Although they don't have all of the funds right now to finish the build of cell 1B. So they were looking at, you know, should they finance it? Um, what should they do? Or could they use the contingency fund from cell 1A? So some of the municipalities have already been sending in their re resolutions as far as what they would like to see happen. So um, this is a resolution that council can either pass or if you would like to change the wording to um, request the money to be returned back to Kindersley, that's entirely up to council. Just for information, it's approximately what, $250,000 is our share, I believe? Well, Somewhere. so the overall budget, it did the construction bill did come in under budget, um, but the wording that um, they're looking at is just the contingency portion of the budget, so it's actually going to be a little bit lower than that. Um, and when the overall construction is done, I think then they would look at what they would do with all of the remaining funds of the bill. So they're only looking at what the contingency dollar amount was. There's really only one or two. So far there's, the one, one, one. out of the 19 municipalities, we don't have all the resolutions back yet. Um, all of them had sent in so far that Worley should retain the funds to use for capital expenses, such as the construction of cell 1B. Um, but there was two municipalities that have uh, requested the funds to be returned. So they will be talking about this at the upcoming AGM in October. Um, but it would be nice, I think, to have Kindersley's resolution at the AGM if all the other municipalities' resolutions are coming in. Any comments or questions on this? How do they make a decision? Majority rules? Well, I don't know. I guess it'll come to vote and it'll probably come back to the municipalities again. Uh, for a final vote, but like it was stated that it should have to be like if one municipality wants it back, then everybody would get their funds back. Um, 
or yeah so I guess it's hard to say exactly which way they'll go I have also suggested like we do have enough money to almost build the second cell except for about 200 we're roughly two hundred thousand dollars short and then we'll um, a line of credit which we did but yeah, we're currently applying for a line of credit. Um, some municipalities believe that, you know, instead of financing it and having to pay interest or whatever, it would just make sense to use the money that the municipalities have put into the pot at the end of the construction, then um, disperse the funds accordingly. Um, but some, de like, because Worley is its separate entity and it's supposed to be running as a business, so some believe that they sh should give the funds back and... Uh, operate as a business and uh, you know get a loan as you know finance it as required um, however we also do have another I guess we have another community that's interested in in um, buying into the partnership and so right now I guess at the last council meeting uh, there was like a policy that we talked about that is going to go to the AGM in October that has a formula based on communities that are um, interested in coming in. So if they do come in, this community, if it is allowable, and they, they do come in, then there will be extra funds that Worley would see that would also then help in the construction. So um, these funds may automatically then get dispersed back to the municipality, and this resolution wouldn't be required, but. I think, I think it's just a guide now for for us to go back to the meeting and say, no, can you see this? Kindersley wants theirs used in the construction. Right. If in fact this other community comes in, that a price tag for them will be enough that it will cover the shortfall, I believe. Yes. In the construction costs. Yes. And if that being the case, then maybe maybe there is a possibility of getting a refund. I I'd, I'd suggest why not give back half to everybody and I don't know where that ever well, we didn't really get there yet. One community had suggested that all the communities get their money back except for Kindersley because if Kindersley kept their money on the table and financed it then they would have a, enough dollars and then at the end of the project you know when we would then get our money back later so that was proposed but uh, we had kind of stated that we should all act as one and if one gets it back then they all get it back or, or yeah. none or whatever. Any, any, anybody, I've got a resolution on the table that we leave the money in there, so I need a mover and a second on that, please. Second, Randy. For the question, all in favor of leaving money in there? Uh, and 7-6 is the worldly construction schedule for cell 1B. You know, I guess that's it's probably up on the screen here. Yeah, so uh, we did wait a considerable amount of time to get our permit to construct, which we did receive from the Ministry of Environment just a week ago. So um, it did put us behind in our construction schedule. Uh, Willow's Construction is the uh, contractor that was awarded the construction of cell 1B. Um, they spent last week basically mobilizing or beginning the process of mobilizing and today was um, going to be the day that they were going to begin excavation. There is a kickoff meeting tomorrow morning um, and so that's basically their construction schedule that's in the package and uh, they don't see any reason why they wouldn't finish uh, this year before uh, the ground freezes. So. Yeah. We'll move on to agenda item 7.7 .7, that the Council of Town of Kinders are resolved to set the remuneration rates for election officials for the November 9th, 2020 election for the Council of Town of Kindersley as follows. The returning officer, the regular poll 400, advanced poll 0. Deputy returning officer, regular poll 250, advanced poll 150. Poll and election clerk, regular poll 200, advanced poll 125. Constable slash poll assistant, regular 175, advanced poll 100, and that in addition to the rates of remuneration as set out above, 
Meal allowances shall be paid where the poll is held over a meal hour as follows. Lunch, $14, where a meal shall be provided. To supper, $19, where a meal shall be provided. Returning officer. <laughs> to speak to this. Sure, through the Mayor's Council. So I did um, send out through our Saskatchewan Finance um, Group just what other communities, like communities, were doing. And this is the average of what, um, like, Weyburn, Esteban, Martinsville, all were, Humboldt were all doing. So um, they are increased a little bit from four years ago, but. Um, I believe four years ago the re deputy returning officer was 200 and now it's 250. So those are the kind of increase that I went to. The, the, the regular poll, so for 250, um, the, they're there from about 8.30 in the morning till probably 10 o'clock at night. So it is a long day. So if you divide all those hours um, into that, it's not a whole heck of a lot of nothing, but it's the... Minimum wage and a little bit. Yeah, yeah, barely. Yeah. Any questions, Council? Not. Could I have a mover and a seconder for the motion, please? Please. Gary. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Agenda item 7.8, that the Council of the Town of Kinders resolves to authorize administration to complete the following funded reserve transfers uh, upon the passing of this resolution. <clears throat> 600,000 from the util utility development fee reserve, 450 from the capital trust fund reserve, 160,000 to the service road reserve, 50,000 to the service road reserve and 100,000 to the recreation reserve. Yeah, so to the council, or through the mayor to council. So these are just um, transfers that weren't approved in our 2020 budget. Um, one and two, the 600 from the development utility development fee reserve and the 450 of the capital trust fund are both um, to balance off our lagoon so we didn't have to borrow more um, than what we have done. The 160 and the 50 to the service road reserve, so that was um, due to us getting constantly sort of bumped doing our um, road work. Pay, or patching and the sidewalk patching for 2020. So we're just moving that into a reserve so that we can do more of that in 2021 and when we hopefully are earlier on in the schedule. And the 100,000 to the recreation reserve was for the dehumidifier. Um, by the time Carl got all the facts on that, it was too late to get that installed in 2020. And um, we had part of it in the reserve already, but this part was from the um, general operating. So we're just gonna move that in. So when we budget it for 2021, the whole project can be paid for through the reserve instead of rebudgeting it for it through the <coughs> general operating. Any questions on that, Council? I get movers and seconders then. Randy, Chris, all in favor? Very good. Okay. 7.9. Whereas legislation requires that urban municipalities hold an election every four years for the positions of mayor and all councillors, which allows for the possibility of an entirely new council to be elected every four years and which is extremely stressful for both the new council and the administrator and whereas legislation requires that rural municipalities hold elections every two years for alternating halves of council thereby eliminating the possibility of an entirely new council being elected while also keeping administration up to date on election procedures therefore the council of the town of kinders resolves to request that the saskatchewan municipal Valleys Association advocate to the Ministry of Government Relations on behalf of urban municipalities being allowed to have council elections every two years for alternating halves of council and every four years the mayor, thereby ensuring that a level of continuity of experience is maintained, is maintained for urban councils. And this 
Audrey comes from uh, Ar the town of Arcola. Arcola. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, this has been brought to what used to be SUMA, which is now the Saskatchewan Municipalities Association, many times um, because it is it is a concern for some that you have an entirely new council and when and, and I guess when that happens too there's kind of a, a stop on productivity because everybody has to get caught up in and um, learn what's going on and it, it, it is a big learning curve for somebody who hasn't sat um, in a municipal environment or been part of a municipal environment so um, they're trying again so the town of Arcola said if you, if you they asked everybody to please pass this motion and they'll take it to the next um, convention in January or February, I guess, and see if um, they can't get passed to see if legislation can get changed. I think there is there is some merit. Municipalities have been doing that forever. The so, rules, yes. Yeah, the rules. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's... Has its merits, I guess. In some cases, you're probably going to get the same people rerunning again, but and there's a cost involved. In there is a cost this. involved having an election every two as opposed to every yeah. one because that doesn't change that part. But I don't know. It's not anybody else huge. Got any comments on it, Gary? I like the idea because yeah, I think there's almost more of a cost than the learning curve for administration that maybe you know it took us. A couple of weeks at least. Some of us are having a tougher time with protocol and others. <laughs> but even to get all the costs, that's a lot of weight. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's not a bad idea. I don't yeah. see anything wrong with that. Councilor Moss? Everybody else, I guess for myself, I'm kind of conflicted with this. Um, I'm not sure if I do and don't support it. I understand that there's some pressure put on administration. However, I do really believe that um, the way we vote, how we vote, and how we cast our ballots, when we cast our ballots, things like that, that really is a decision that belongs with the voters themselves. Um, I believe that if a community feels that they need wholesale change in their governance, that they have the ability to make that decision and vote for that. Um, we've seen that when we got on council, I mean, all but one of us was new members of council and that's because at that time the community felt like they wanted a wholesale governance change and i believe that we um, respectfully should be leaving those decisions in the hands of the voters i don't think that's a decision for the people in governance to say how and when the, the residents vote that that should be a decision of the residents of the community to decide if that's the way they want their representation decided so I guess for me I wouldn't want to put in a resolution unless we were to consult with our community members and ensure that that's what they want to see in the community for the style of governance and I guess yeah I think if they want the right to a wholesale change then they should have the right to that wholesale change. Well it wouldn't be a wholesale change it's just half of your council every two years is what they're what the motion is saying. Uh, the one thing Government seems to be able to change whatever they like. We used to have three year terms, all of a sudden they got told they're yeah. four year terms. We might come back next year and go back to three year terms, who knows? Because always now we're running it in conflict with a provincial election, which isn't ideal. So, and that's why we're moved till November 9th from 26th of October, too, because. I guess I struggled because I'm not convinced that that was. Uh I guess when we came in on council, that was not what our community was looking for, and I don't know if we would have had the same progress we had um, had we not gotten that wholesale change. Um, you oh, sometimes I, get a little bit more resistance between those at the table when you're not getting that either, because if you don't have everybody wanting to move progressively. Um, I'm just one of those people I'm conflicted on this one. <laughs> well, through Mayor Council, so is they're saying if you have it every two years, it's less of a learning curve? You only have half your council actually be re-elected every mm -hmm. half. So you'd be holding yeah. elections oh. every two years, but only for half of your council each time. See, and, and that works well with a rural municipality right now it, because every every councillor is in a division. So, you know, yeah. they have, say, 1 to 10, and um, your rate pairs can only vote for that 
that one person, whereas the town, it's, it's everybody. And, and not that they can't. Um, cities like Saskatoon, Regina, they're divided into wards, and then so whatever ward you're in, that's who you can vote for. So if um, you two are both in Ward 1, then I have an option of two people. Um, if you're Ward 2 and you're the only one you're in by acclamation into that ward, um, that's not how the majority of urbans are ran, so they would have to do some sort of changing on how they it's so basically how it would would happen is if this were to go through say if this hap was going through this year um half in we're having a whole election for everybody half would have a two-year term the other half would have a four-year term and that's the only year that would happen and yeah. that is the yeah. only yeah. year that would happen and yeah. in two years the two-year term it's people would be happening different yeah. times and yeah. then after that it would be rotating yes okay. Yes. Yeah. But you would only get to change half of your council. Yeah, to that's get, right. So. Right. Yeah. If you weren't, if you three, you three, three could get voted in, and you get and you get those trucks drawn, you get uh, four years. These us three would serve two years the first time, and yeah. then the election again. But you'd stay for the full four. So, and if we all went yeah. in again, we'd stay for the full four. So it's just to get that yeah. first year of awesome. yeah. So then what happens? <laughs> the deputy mayor is that two years or four? Years? Deputy mayor is a okay. position that's appointed by it's, it's annual. It's, it's not, not elected. elected. It's, it's just an annual, and it's annually appointed. I, don't know. I just I don't, if it's not broken, I wouldn't agree with it. I've never heard of this being a problem. No, it's not I don't know whether it is or it isn't. I guess it's yeah, yeah. we all learned it wasn't insurmountable. But. Anyways, we should uh, we should vote on it one way or the other. So, all of those in favor of the two-year alternating firm? One, two. Do you want to move our oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a mover and a second for the motion? Then we'll vote on it. Elise and uh, Chris. Okay. Now we'll get it right. All those in favor of a two-year rotating term. All those opposed. Defeated. Hey, let me go. Okay, 7.10. Financial report. Audrey, how are we doing? Yeah, not yeah. bad. Yeah, well. We're, yeah, well, <laughs> every council meeting I have a panic attack and then I'm <laughs> fine for a couple days. Um, yeah, so. Again, I have a lot of them. Again, are the same. Um, we're sixty. We're just about three quarters of the way through the year. Um, the ones in red are the ones that have changed from the previous um, report from last month. So, it, which is point number two, the bylaw fences, which are just down from what we had budgeted. Um, the WC. EC costs are currently low, and that had more to do with the early shutdown of um, in in the spring, and we haven't put the other ice surface in yet, so that's going to be a, a little bit of savings that way. And the um, rink staff, a lot of them are still with parks because we're not they're not needed at the arena yet, so that's you know putting parks over and probably keeping the event center a little bit lower in their expenses and then at point 12 um, which the utility revenue we haven't received our lagoon grant yet which Kim and I are going to do soon and but the, the other part <laughs> is the um, yeah tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow yeah mm -hmm. and then the again which I mentioned before was that just that reduced sale of commercial water that um, actually is quite a big hit for us this year that I guess we I didn't we didn't anticipate that it would be such a high um, decline in water usage so let's hope that the industry comes back and yeah. we can budget for it again okay uh, and item 8.1 of the Council of Town of Kindersley resolves to accept as submitted the list of accounts as paid by the Town of Kindersley and the amount of the room. See why you had a little. Yeah, I know every. $2,120,125.24. It's not much if you say it quick. 
And that a copy of said accounts be attached to and form a part of the minutes of this meeting. Did you have any? Uh, I did actually. I had um, questions from Councillor Baker and Deputy Mayor, um, and it was just regarding the Kamaloi investments check. Um, those we had a bunch. Actually, all those last checks on that statement, they were a bunch of stale dated checks um, that hadn't been cashed. So we usually reissue at least twice, and then we decide what will happen at that point. Most of these were the first time that we were reissuing, so that was that check. Um, the question about the Flamin bike, um, which was for the pathway to wellness, and we just purchased it through the town to get a better deal, and then we'll get the KCIP grant to cover that, which they've been approved for. And then the Miller Thompson, which um, we explained was for the Adaris mediation and um, uh, an employee issue. Any other questions, Council? Big checks in there uh, right at the end for the two major contractors that we got rolling right now. Yeah, we were happy. And contact. <laughs> Hopefully that'll come to an end quickly. So I need a mover and a seconder to spend all that money. Sir Anderson, second Deputy Mayor. All in favor? Okay. Oh, I get to, well, I'm not going to read all these bylaws. That's for sure. Okay, uh, agenda item 91A that uh, the Council of the Town of Kennedy resolves to approve the first reading of bylaw 8 20, being a bylaw of the Town of Kennedy to establish a code of ethics for council members. Uh, through to Audrey, uh, yeah. any comments on that before I read it? Yes, this is just the bylaw. This um, this one repeals, and I can't remember which one it repeals. Uh, Seventeen sixteen, um, and it's just a bylaw just to um, I guess monitor to have the code of conduct, code of ethics for the council members, um, and we just kind of tweaked it and updated it, and yeah, yeah. Nothing new. Yeah. Just an update of the previous one. Okay. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that then, Elise? Uh, Gary? All in favor? Okay, now we'll do this about four more times, I think it is. Uh, agenda item 91B that the Council of Town of Kinders resolves to approve the second rating of bylaw 8 20. And again, I need movers and seconders for that. Rob and Chris? All in favor? One more, two more times. Okay. Mm -hmm. 91C that the Council of Town of Kinders are resolved to approve that three readings be given to bylaw 80820 at the 20, September 28th, 2020 regular meeting of Council. Mover Randy, second Gary. All in favor? And 91D, that the Council of the Town of Kindersley resolves to approve that bylaw 08-20, being a bylaw of the Town of Kindersley to establish a code of ethics for council members, be read a third time and hereby be approved, and that the approved copy of this bylaw be attached to and form part of these minutes. Uh, mover and second. Um, all in favor? Mm -hmm. And here it is, all 12 pages, 10 pages, sorry. Okay, uh, 92A, that the Council of Town of Kinders are resolved to approve the first reading of bylaw 0920, being a bylaw of the Town of Kindersley, to regulate the proceedings of Town Council and the committees of Council. Uh, through to the CAO to speak on, please. So, Again, this is a bylaw that um, we repealed 1716. Um, so this is the this bylaw just regulates the proceeding at council. So how the your agenda is laid out, um, you know what gets put into a closed what qualifies to get put into a closed session, how special meetings, regular meetings are handled. You know, um, basically how to. Yeah, run your council meeting um, at the end of the day. 
how, you know, what we accept as proclamations, how we do bylaws, public hearings, quorums, those kind of things. So. Everybody Welcome. read it all and they're good? Can I have a mover and a second here for that, please? At least second hearing. All in favor? Okay, we'll do it a few more times here. 9-2-B, that the Council of Town of Kinderton resolves to approve the second reading of Bylaw 0920. Mover, seconder, please. Rob, second, Randy. All in favor? Gary, thank you. 9-2-C, that the Council of the Town of Kindersley resolves to approve that three readings be given to Bylaw 0920 at the 20, September 28, 2020, regular meeting of Council. Need to move around secondary again. Randy, Gary. All in favor? And finally, 9-2-D, that the Council of the Town of Kindersley resolves to approve that Bylaw 0920 being a bylaw of the Town of Kindersley to regulate the proceedings of Town Council and that the and the committees of Council be read a third time and hereby be approved and that the approved copy of this bylaw be attached to and form part of these minutes. Final mover and seconder. Gary, Rob. All in favor? Gary. Yeah. And this one is a lot better reading, it's 37 pages. <laughs> That'll be homework for tonight. Okay, 10.1. Getting in there. Money's rub out of my melodious tones tonight. Whereas the Council of the Town of Kindersley is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Kindersley, and whereas the Council of the Town of Kindersley proudly supports the firefighters of the Kindersley Fire Department as one of the most highly trained departments in the province, proficient in both firefighting and emergency rescue techniques, and who are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention, protection, and education, and whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme is serve up fire safety in the kitchen and whereas cooking is the number one cause of home fires and home fire injuries and unattended cooking is the leading cause of fires in the kitchen. Therefore, I, Rod Perkins, Mayor of the Town of Kindersley, do hereby proclaim October 4th to the 10th, 2020 as Fire Prevention Week throughout the town of Kindersley. That's pretty self-explanatory, so I would like a mover and a seconder for supporting our very proficient fire department that we have. Gary? Second, Rob? All in favor? Gary, thank you. Eleven one that the Council of Town of Kinders are resolved to approve the consent agenda, including the following items. I think I listed these before. There's stats from the RCMP, minutes from the Chamber of Commerce, two sets of minutes, and a September newsletter from the South Saskatchewan Watershed Stewards, EK Water Board, the August 2020 pumping <coughs> report, West Central Crisis Center intake manager. Thank you for our donation, I guess it would be, and a letter from MP Jeremy Patzer uh, replying to the resolution we made regarding gun control, I think it was the last meeting or perhaps the one before that. It's about all the just general correspondence, so I'll need a mover and a seconder for the correspondence, please. Chris, second, Randy, thank you. All in favor? That's good. Okay, we're going to get to use these this time. Agenda item 12.1, that the Council of Traffic Industry resolves, whereas the time being 7.50 p.m., that the regular meeting of Council be adjourned to a confidential in-camera meeting to review previously circulated items. We need a move around the second. Uh, Gary, all in favor?
favor. Carried. Any business arising from the in-camera session, Council? Seeing none, 15-1, that the Council of Town of Kindersley resolves that all business having been concluded, the September 28th, 2020 regular meeting of Council be adjourned at 8.30 p.m. Neighbor and second. All in favor? Carried.